Pillar Technologies presenting is co-founders Alex Schwarzkopf and Matt Joyle. Check, check. Can everybody hear me okay? Cool. Awesome. Everyone, thanks for coming. Alex, Matt with Pillar Technologies. We're going to talk to you today about the construction site. But first, we're from New York City, fairly iconic skyline. We went to school at a primarily engineering, architecture, and construction management uh, university. And so we're all familiar with London as well. These are fairly iconic cities. Finally, anybody, anybody been here? Anybody know what this is? Hi. Yeah? OK, we got a few. Yep. But really, they all started as holes in the ground. And that means that they started as a very unpredictable environment. In fact, construction sites are plagued with water damage. For example, temperatures drop, pipes burst, water leaks. That's a lot of money. Humidity, mold growth. That brand new building you built, that tenant's suing you because they can't breathe anymore. Emphysema, it's a real problem. And finally, you never, never, never want this. This is a catastrophic loss. In fact, in the insurance industry that insures construction sites, 30% of the total claims payouts are from fire damage. But there's currently not a common adoption of early warning fire detection systems on construction sites today. So that's why we built Pillar Technologies. Pillar is the first real-time environmental monitoring solution designed to prevent or mitigate damage from the top three causes of loss, fire, water, and mold, and also to help contractors use environmental information to improve logistics and secure their profitability. So we're actually going to walk you through a uh, mock deployment for the sake. We prepared a little uh, show for you here. Matt's going to come over and demo the multiple mounting methods we have. So this is two years of learning. Um, we have the magnet mount, so it basically straps right on any piece of metal. Easy to deploy, that's done. Uh, to get it out of the way, we included a hanging strap on the side. So the walls are finished, you put a screw in the wall, you just hang it up. And finally, if you have a PVC pipe or a metal pipe, and you just use the silicone strap built right in, it's designed to be moved in five seconds or less, because this environment is incredibly dynamic and people have to move around it. Um, so Matt's going to bring up the dashboard. Oh, cue, uh, cue uh, computer screen, please. Uh-oh. Uh, yeah, sorry. Technical difficulty. Uh, dashboard, you want to explain a little bit about it? Ah, there we go. Yes, all right. So on the dashboard, we have everything the contractor would want to see, including site health, sensor health, active alerts, and uh, basically um, a weather station, because weather.com isn't really the best for finding out the weather exactly where you are. <laughs> um, and so we're, we have a couple set up here. Um, we have a space heater and a humidifier. Um, this is actually meant to demo, and it's kind of challenging because we're not actually on a construction site, but this is going to demo for you some alerts. So we're going to explain these. Um, first one we're going to do is humidity. So humidity, as I mentioned, starts with mold growth. It's temperature, humidity, and time that lead to mold growth. And the challenge being that contractors just don't have an awareness. I can't stick my finger in the air and measure humidity. So with this system, we're basically making the information we're measuring from the environment proactive. Um, so contractors can actually drill into the sensor data specifically. And we can also push alerts right to their smartphone. Um, so the second one, temperature. Temperature not only increases the risk of fire damage on construction sites, but it also leads to worker fatigue. So on one of our job sites, contractors were working at 110 degrees Fahrenheit for an extended period of time, just because nobody really knows. And it's just a very uh, chaotic environment. Uh, back to PowerPoint, please. Uh-oh. We'll roll through it. Go back to the uh, go back to the other one. Go to that one. PowerPoint. This is my apologies here. So anyway, the industry spends $12 billion 
in damages that otherwise could have been preventable or mitigated. Uh, they're competing for over $1.16 trillion in new construction alone, and the average contractor makes about a margin of 3% on every job, which is very, very low. Next slide, please. It's so we charge in a way the industry understands. We charge on a per square foot basis, three cents per square foot, one time deployment fee, that's for us to go in and set it up. And then we charge two cents per square foot per month. We're bundling hardware, software, and firmware all into one package as a service. So it makes it really easy to use. Finally, my team and I have been working in the EV space, consumer electronics, and defense contracting. And we really feel that this technology is going to change the way we build the environment, bringing buildings to life in less time, for less money, and with a quality never before seen. We're Pillar Technologies. We're building the first environmental monitoring solution for the construction site. You can follow us at pillar.tech. Thank you so much. So in a typical site, when you go in, how many of these units do you need to put in per square foot, or what's the metric? Yeah, this is a good question. Unfortunately, we had some uh, challenges. But what we do is we digest the floor plan, and we understand uh, high-risk areas. Um, we basically get 2,000 square feet per sensor. And so you can basically, it's fairly easy to do a contract value on that, too. Um, on our website, we're working on a pricing calculator, so contractors can go in and enter the square footage of their job, the duration of the job, and the type of project, and get a quote right from there. And how often do you have to go in? Because it's construction, it's a building going up or something going up. So do you have to put in new sensors every week or every couple weeks? Yeah, it depends. So sometimes we're doing high rises, in which case they're finishing a floor every week. And so what happens is we'll, we'll ship them the box of sensors. The actual locations are predetermined from the floor plans, and they're already programmed in the dashboard. And so when they finish a the floor, they go to the, the uh, dashboard, they look at where the, the sensors need to be placed, and then they just place them as they go up. So yeah. You don't have to worry about charging the batteries or anything. Uh, each device will last for two years before it needs to be replaced. And so um, what sort of, what, what's in there besides the sensors? It's um, like some access to network, uh, which I assume is um, just regular sensor networks, or what do you guys use? Yeah, so we use a low power wide area network, uh, around 700, uh, 900 megahertz. Okay. Uh, great for um, penetrating through construction materials. Uh, everything goes directly to a gateway, which backhauls everything cellularly. So now everything's on one network that the uh, general contractor doesn't have to even worry about. We take care of it for them. Why construction? Why construction? Yeah, so it seems like the sensors you have and the, the easy form factor, it seems like I could use it at home. So can you talk about your customer discovery process and how you figured that construction was the best market? And uh, along those lines, do you have a, an initial customer? Yeah. So um, the home space is actually quite crowded. Um, when we looked at the industrial space, we realized nobody was really addressing the construction site. Um, as I mentioned a little earlier, we went to a specifically construction engineering and architecture school. So we had incredible exposure throughout the five years that we attended that college. Um, so when we graduated, we saw a need um, and with our previous experience, we were able to fill it. Um, in terms of like our customers, we're working with six of the largest GCs in the United States right now. Um, we did four pilots last year, and we're bringing 10 uh, pilots online this year in Q1. Congrats, that's great. You Thank should you. have mentioned that as part of your pitch. Yeah, it didn't quite go as we planned. <laughs> um, since it's not really sort of clear what three cents per square foot or two cents per square foot uh, sure. subscription sort of gives you, what sort of what is your expected revenue per construction site on average? I'd say average contract value is between twenty-five and fifty thousand um, dollars per, per per job site. Per job site. Correct. So each sensor makes about fifty dollars per month when they come online. That's how, that's how the math works out. Okay. Um, we break even in about a month and a half at the current rate uh, for unit economics. Um, and then the average duration of those job sites is usually between, I'd say, six months to 11 months. And, we, and when you look at these sites today, how do they measure these environmental conditions? Is it something that they don't measure, or is it something that's really more anecdotal today? It's actually measured uh, by handheld. So they'll walk around sporadically and take readings intermittently. Um, currently, they do like data logging, but they put it in an Excel spreadsheet, and then it just goes into a black hole. 
So there's no active analytics done on it. And, and one follow-up question around it. Are there some things that the GCs actually don't want to know? Hmm. So they actually don't want to know that it's a little too hot on the site. And then once they have it, they might be worried about OSHA liability or things they didn't have before. So have you gotten a sense for that at all or not? Yeah, I think it's a tough question. I think any sort of breaking into any industry. Um, one thing we have heard is that companies that have been proactive understand it's coming. Uh, they understand that this is going to become an integral part of their business, technology in general, more specifically quantifying the environment. So I, I can't really convince somebody that, you know, this is going to uh, hurt them, you know, in a way. Um, it could potentially be a challenge for their business. But ultimately what happens is you see the inter intersection of the relationship between the insurance company and the general contractor. And so I think the economics are going to force them to come together at some point in time. Um, and the partners we found, those six companies I mentioned before, have been very proactive about it. So there is a potential, but so far companies have been willing to take that risk. One quick question. Um, so why movable sensors as opposed to just trying to embed something in different walls so that you can actually still monitor you know, fire and water and mold after the floor is finished? Just Great. like curiosity. Great question. So um, in order to do that, we would need power and infrastructure to support connectivity. So we actually have to bring all this so to the job expensive. site. Okay. Exactly. Now, this box behind you can be repurposed and actually installed permanently in the building. Um, that could be another potential revenue source we'd explore. Um, one interesting use case is actually large-scale commercial residential. So for unoccupied units, you, we can actually bring the network to your building, and you can put those in any of your unoccupied units as well. So you talked about how low the margins are for your customers. So they're going to look at every expense really, really closely. So it's $50,000 to install your system. What are, they, what are they getting back for that? What's their, what's their ROI as a customer? And answer in one or two sentences. Sure. So our ROI, I can tell you what we got on our last pilot program. So with 20 sensors on half of one floor of a three-story building, we had nine times ROI. It cost them $3,000 to use our system, and we saved them about 50 grand or so. The reason that's interesting is because the damage expenses come out of what's called general conditions, which is actually what's used to pay bonuses to the construction workers. <laughs> I think that's a good note to end on. Give it up for Pillar Technologies. Thank you. All right, we are bringing up our third company, Blytab, up onto the stage. Um, judges, what do you think? Are you convinced? Is this going to change uh, construction? Well, I think it's something that's inevitable that these sites are going to be measured and monitored and all these pieces will be there. I think the thing we didn't get a chance to get into as much is who's the real buyer? Is it really the general contractor? Is it somebody that's actually the architect or somebody that's specifying the project and says, well, you actually need to put these things in place, whether it's insurance or something else. So I think it's a glimpse of the future, but the real question is, who are you really selling to and who's that buyer going to be? Well, it could be the insurance company that just mandates that they use this because that reduces the exposure to the risk. And then they will eat up the cost because if you look at their actual model, that's how they avoid, you know, um, sort of fire or water or whatever. Is everyone mostly thumbs up? Yeah, I think it's, I mean, it's, it's a general trend that we see in industrial where we just have a provision of sensors. The question is, how well have they thought about the economic model that makes their business viable without, as you said, adding too many costs in super low margin sort of businesses? One, one of the things we're seeing with consumers is just this need for monitoring. So a lot of these connected home Devices, one of the, the, what the main use case is control, so you can do things remotely, but the second most important one is remote monitoring. So when you're not at home, people want to know what's going on in the home. I could see the same thing in construction. When you're not on the job site, like at night, you kind of want to know what's going on. So I, I could see this is pretty interesting. Yeah, so, look, oh, go ahead. Look at that massive fire we had in San Francisco where someone just left something running, you know, after 5 p.m., and next thing you know, the entire building gets torched. So, you know, it, it pays for itself very quickly. When so you that also those. brings up, I mean, because you were asking about um, why construction, it seems like potentially this could be useful outside of construction as well, too. Sure. I think the, the issue is always for entrepreneurs trying to find a focused marketing strategy that gets them in, prove the value, and then expand it. So, you know, 
it seems, a, it seems winnable to me. I'm a little disappointed that we couldn't find some way to do a more spectacular demo on stage, like setting something on fire. They had to bring the fire, and you said no. <laughs> I'm sure that was not our decision. It was probably the, the owner of the building's decision, which I understand. 